Hello, it's one I T Pro Writer versus all of MSDN. I'm your host, Tim El Hajj. This week, we're going to install and configure Microsoft Office SharePoint 2010 with uh, Team Foundation Server 2010. We're going to install it all on a single server. We already have SQL Server installed. It takes about four hours in real time, but we're going to compress it down to, uh, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes uh, video. Okay, one nice thing about the SharePoint Server 2010 install, it's got this uh, install software prerequisites option. And uh, what that does is you click that and uh, it installs roles, hot fixes, everything your server needs to install a SharePoint server. We're not going to do that right now, but we recommend it. Okay, so click install, uh, give it a minute, uh, type in your product key, click continue. Uh, on the next page, accept the agreement, click continue again. All right. You want to click server farm and then here complete, click install now, you're done. It's that simple. Okay, we're going to speed up the install here and uh, when it gets to the end of its routine, it's going to run a little prompt to uh, prompt you to run the uh, configuration wizard. You just want to make sure that that's checked. Okay, once the configuration wizard pops up, uh, you can click next on the welcome screen. Uh, you'll probably get a warning about restarting some services. Just go ahead and click yes, that's okay. On the connect to a new server farm page, you want to click create a new server farm, then click next. On the database settings page in database server, type the name of the server that is running SQL Server, in which we use to host the database for Team Foundation Server. If you're going to use a named instance, you can just put a slash after the name of the database server and uh, put the name of it right behind it. We're just going to use the default instance on this server, so we'll just put the name of the server in there. Okay, so we're going to specify your database account. You need a domain account here. Uh, you can't use a built-in account, no network service, and it has to have uh, allow logon locally permission. This is, uh, we call this WS service in the install guide. Uh, okay, so one other thing, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, we're going to use a single account for two different identities. What we're actually putting in here is uh, the same account that we're going to use for TFS reports, which is the report reader account that you need uh, when you set up TFS, and uh, it's the identity used for creating reports. If you were to install Team Foundation Server 2010 with the default options, uh, it would prompt you for one account with uh, allow logon locally permission. And, uh, and this is what it does. It uses one account for uh, this database accounts for uh, SharePoint, and it also uses the same account for uh, the report reader account. So that's what we're going to do. This is new for Moss 2010. You need a passphrase. Uh, you can change it after you set it up, but uh, you need one here to, uh, to, to get to install. Okay, here you want to specify a, a port number for the uh, central administration site. Uh, you don't have to change this, but I recommend you do. It's uh, by default, uh, for TFS, we usually recommend that you go with 17012. Of course, for authentication, you want NTLM. Click Next. Click Next again, and you're done. SharePoint will churn for a little bit. We're going to zip through that. And, uh, and then once you get through, you'll get the uh, confirmation page. And you just click Finish, and you're done. When you click Finish, the uh, admin tool will come up, and, uh, and we've got some stuff to do in there. Okay, after this, your browser is going to pop up, and the first thing you're going to see is a prompt to uh, see if you will participate in making SharePoint better, and who doesn't want to make SharePoint better. Okay, the next thing, SharePoint is going to prompt you uh, to use some wizards to configure your SharePoint farm. The thing is, if uh, you're going to use this other tool to uh, configure SharePoint Moss for a uh, Team Foundation server, then you don't want to uh, use these wizards. Uh, just skip right over it, click cancel. Uh, we'll configure it another way and uh, move right along to provision uh, a website. So uh, it'll drop you into the SharePoint central administration. And what you want to do is click the, uh, 
the link for managing web applications. Okay, so you'll notice there's one web application in here. It's for the SharePoint Central Administration site. Click New because we're going to create one more. Okay, so if you're setting up a, a new web application on a new server, it's, uh, it's really easy. It's basically just uh, using the default settings. Uh, you just create the new one. And uh, what Team Foundation Server is looking for is uh, a web application that uses port 80 uh, and uh, that uses NTLM for authentication and, uh, and then just add a unique name in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the description field there. And if you have all those things, then you're fine. You can just go ahead and say OK. Um, and the reason you need port 80 is uh, if you don't specify port 80, if you put it on some other port, then uh, any time one of your clients goes to use that uh, web application, they're going to need to put the port, num port number into the, uh, into, the, into the browser, into the URL. So uh, after you click OK, it'll take a few minutes, and uh, uh, we're going to speed that up. Um, and, uh, and it's created. Now when project administrators uh, in Team Foundation Server create projects, uh, those projects will appear on uh, uh, the SharePoint site on the uh, web application on port 80. Uh, after the release of Team Foundation Server 2010, Microsoft created a tool to automatically configure MOS. It configures MOS 2007 or 2010, and uh, it comes with its own documentation that describes how to use it, and uh, you can download it. Uh, if you can just search for Team Foundation Server 2010 MOS configuration tool, or you can use the uh, link from the blog. Once you download it, extract it to your computer, we're going to just skip ahead, uh, extract it onto your computer. It'll come with a couple of um, uh, an executable file, a DLL, some documentation. It doesn't come with a start menu item, so you got to sort of drill down into the file system to find it. It's under Program Files, Microsoft Team Foundation Server, 2010 SharePoint Configure folder. Uh, you can uh, read the documentation, launch the executable, and uh, and then we're ready to begin. Okay, we're going to use this to configure Excel services and the Secure Store Service, uh, which is new for MOS 2010. Uh, Secure Store Service replaces MOS 2007's single sign-on service. And uh, you're going to notice in the tool that uh, this is only required if you've got uh, 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 SharePoint on a different machine than um, Team Foundation Server. We're setting it up all on a single server, but we're still going to use it. And the reason we're going to do that is because uh, we don't want to give, it makes everything easier. It's recommended. You don't have to uh, give credentials to everyone who wants to use the SQL Server reporting services if uh, you set up the Secure Store service. So we're going to do that. So it's going to want uh, an application administrator. And uh, we're going to use TFS reports, uh, the same account that we used for WSS service. And, uh, and then down here, uh, and specify credentials for the uh, Team Foundation Server reports. We're going to use TFS reports again. And uh, here, it's going to need a password. And put those in. Next, you're going to need a, a group account, a global security group. It has to be from the domain that contains all the users to whom you want to grant access to the dashboards and reports in Team Foundation Server. OK, click Verify. And then uh, on this next screen, the uh, tool is going to uh, hard code the uh, application ID to uh, TFS. Uh, and uh, that's important later on. Uh, for now, click Configure and uh, let the tool configure uh, MOS for us. Uh, later on, after we install Team Foundation Server, we're going to, uh, let's speed through this. We're going to uh, take that TFS and we're going to put it into the, uh, 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 the ad ad administrator's console and uh, uh, to get it all to work. So there's one step left after you install Team Foundation Server, and it's to add that, that little bit of information uh, to get it all permissioned correctly. OK, we're going to jump right into the Team Foundation Server 2010 install. Uh, click Next, uh, accept the agreement. 
uh, click next again. Here on this next screen, all we really need is to select Team Foundation Server. You're going to see the extensions for SharePoint products, but you don't need to select that. That'll be installed automatically. The only reason you see that is because uh, SharePoint is already installed on uh, this machine. Click install and uh, it's probably going to ask for a reboot. Uh, we're going to skip right through that part and uh, jump to the end here. Um, and then notice in the bottom of the success screen, there's a, a checkbox. Uh, so you want to select that and click configure. And uh, that will do, that'll launch the uh, Team Foundation Server configuration tool. And we just need to finish up, do the uh, Team Foundation Server installation to finish up. Okay, the configuration tool is going to come up next. And uh, there's, uh, we're not going to go through all the options here, but you don't want the standard install. You want the advanced install because we're going to set up, uh, we've already got Moss installed and we want to, we want to point the installation, the TFS installation to our, uh, our server. Okay, now I accepted all the default options and uh, now we're at the report reader account. This is uh, information that you have to put in. This is just TFS reports. It's the same account that we've been using for WS service and, uh, and we're gonna use it again here. And uh, you have to put the password in here um, as well. And, uh, and then there's, uh, there's also an option where you can test it if you, if you wanna test it. Click next and uh, click uh, next again. And uh, here on the uh, SharePoint products settings page, you'll notice that it's at SendStar uh, installation of Moss, uh, and it's got the uh, administration URL, it's got the site URL, it's added the sites uh, 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 line to it, uh, and you can test it, and, uh, and uh, they're both good. And then just uh, click Next all the way through. We're going to skip past that and jump to the end. Uh, and then we're going to click finish. We just have one last thing to do in the uh, admin console to finish our Moss install. And so once the admin console comes up, we'll be able to finish uh, with this installation. Okay, the last step in uh, this uh, installation is to go in the Team Foundation Server Administration console and set up the Enterprise Application Definition. Uh, now, to do that, you need to select the uh, uh, SharePoint Products Extensions node, and then uh, inside of there, select uh, the SharePoint uh, application that we set up earlier, and click Modify Access. Now, here's the thing: uh, the the uh, the the Team Foundation, the configuration tool, the Moss configuration tool that we use. Uh, actually set this up for us and it hard coded it to TFS. Unfortunately, it's called the application ID in the configuration tool. But what that is, is that's the enterprise application definition that we need here inside of the, uh, the admin console. So we're just going to add TFS in here, click OK, and then we're done. One IT pro writer versus all of MSDN. Thanks.